Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, creator of Flower Pro and NL brand products for KD Suit Designs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use one of the KD Suit Designs molds, which is going to be the feathers. So let's get started. So this is the KD Suit Designs feather mold. As you can see, this mold has three main cavities, large, medium, and small, and obviously it creates different style feathers. All right, this one is quite open structure, a little skinnier. Obviously it's a really cute uh, curved one, very, very attractive. And then this is the back veiner. You're gonna see how I use that in a moment. So this is used when you vein the large one for the large and the medium. And then this is the veiner for the small. Like with my uh, Flower Pro mold, uh, some of my Flower Pro molds, um, they have a channel here. This is to accommodate if you're going to do a wired feather, which is what I'm going to show you in this video. And um, obviously these can be used full size, but also I'm going to show you how to do smaller feathers as well um, and using a vein into actually vein. You can see here on the leaflet that is included, um, this shows obviously natural bird feathers. So of course you can paint these for quail and pheasants and ducks and lots of different feathers like that. Um, and of course uh, can be done in different color combinations. So both for sugar and for craft, this is a very sort of uh, natural way to decorate a, for example, craft, a frame, or obviously a project. In sugar, this is a really nice element to add to flowers, to sugar flowers. So in my Flower Pro range, you can incorporate these feathers in sort of natural um, hues. And then you have uh, on the back here, you can see this is made by some of the Katie Sue, the cake design team. Um, so obviously a beautiful cake here, Marie Antoinette style cake, with obviously using some of the Katie Sue frames. And here you can see the, um, the uh, obviously feathers used in the metallic. Um, here you have a, obviously a dream catcher, so for like boho and dream catcher style cakes. Um, here you can see a Gatsby inspired cake. So again, that's really sort of obviously in that era, they use a lot of uh, feathers. Things like graduation cakes, you know, for example, you could make a quill to go on top of a book, like a Harry Potter themed cake uh, with, or for graduation, a book with obviously using a quill feather. So very, very sort of innovative mold and can be used in lots of different ways, both in sugar and obviously in craft. And um, I'm going to show you how to do some wired uh, feathers. Uh, this is another way you can use the mold. Um, so you can use this obviously on the cake here. For example, these are unwired feathers, um, but I'm gonna show you how to do wired feathers uh, as an alternative. Now, as far as paste goes uh, in the directions, obviously it says to use a firm paste, um, like a, you can use a modified sugar paste or fondant. If you're using um, uh, just as feathers, all right, to put onto a cake as a decoration, um, that's obviously, you can just modify some uh, sugar paste or rolled fondant. So if you look at a lot of the videos in, for example, my Flower Pro uh, by KD Sue Designs, I, for my pine cones, my antlers, I show obviously modifying sugar paste or rolled fondant. As far as when we do this for uh, wired, all right, so this is a partly uh, completed uh, metallic feather I'm gonna show you. But when you're doing these wired, um, because we're going to, we want these to be a little stronger, I was just using, um, a uh, flower paste, gum paste, flexi paste, something you use to make flowers with, all right? Because we need something a little firmer, it's gonna be a little bit stronger, all right? So, you know, depending on what you're gonna do, of course, air drying clay, you can use these uh, air drying clay, the hardy air drying clay that Katie Sue sell. You can use this uh, obviously for wired or unwired feathers. Okay, so let's get started showing you how to make these. So here I have my color palette. Um, this is being, these have been colored with obviously gel or paste colors. If you're working with air drying clay, those colors uh, can achieve with the uh, Katie Sue Design measuring mold. Um, I actually have a video I did for Katie Sue on showing how to use this. But this is uh, was designed to use with uh, hardy clay. And so uh, you can see there's obviously the ombre colors. Um, so if you use the yellow number two, uh, the green uh, number two, these are the full strength hardy clays, all right? Um, and so what that means, as you see on the video and in reading the instructions, you use a number one of white and a number two of either yellow or green, and that will give you the sort of these colors if this was obviously air drying clay. And uh, as far as the purple, I have some customized bedspoke colors here. So this is the purple that is achieved uh, with the hardy clay. And what I would do is I would just uh, use uh, one, one recipe of this and add an equal amount of white to it. Because you can see this is obviously a little bit of a lighter purple than this. So it's the same hue, but just as I said, light, light, made lighter. 
And um, obviously you can use this guide as for your sugar as well. So of course this works very well with sugar. Um, so if you make your base colors of your flour paste, gum paste, flexi paste, whatever you're using for sugar flowers, make it these sort of colors, you can use this and sort of create these different ombre colors for things like cherry blossoms and other projects in floral. And uh, of course, you of course could start off with uh, when you're doing graduation cakes or other types of cakes, of course, you can start off with white and dust it. Uh, but here we're going to be using the colors. Now I'm going to start off just preparing the mold. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the, uh, talk about the medium mold first. I normally take a little bit of uh, vegetable fat or shortening and uh, put this into the mold. You can use coconut oil as well. I just generally use a brush. This is just a stencil brush. It's got fairly short bristles and either on the back of your hand or obviously uh, on the table just so we don't get too much on there because you want a minimal amount. Like with my some of my Flower Pro molds, um, this has a lot of really beautiful detail. And sometimes using your finger, you won't be able to get that um, into all of those details. So I found a brush usually works well. And I just keep this for this project. And I also would use this for air drying clay as well, especially if you're taking the clay straight from the pack, it's gonna be a little bit wet, um, you can use that. So I see I'm just putting in some, I'm gonna go ahead and put some in the small one as well because I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's a little bit of a different technique. The first method I'm gonna show you is how I do the, um, the medium or the large leaf. Now for those, we're going to use our um, Flower Pro size guide. Um, size guide if you're familiar with it, the uh, way I teach. Um, so we use usually two different techniques for measuring. If you're, uh, for example, if the instruction said a number eight small, what that would mean that your paste would actually go through um, a number eight hole. So I'll show you here. So when I show you the green one in a moment, that is actually gonna go through. See that just goes through the number eight hole. And this is plastic. Um, this is obviously wipe clean. And with my Flower Pro books, there's also a cardboard one in the back of each book. So, and then when you make a regular size, so number eight small is used for the small um, for a feather. So that would be this one here. This is a number eight small. And then this is number eight regular size, and this is number 10 regular size. So when we measure a number eight regular size, we're going to use the size guide here. So we put that in, so it's approximately one third below and two thirds above, all right? That is how you measure the paste. And then the 10 would be the same with the number 10, so one third below, two thirds above. I'm going to take my paste, as I said, now with air drying clay, of course, um, the only difference is when we use in, um, when we use uh, obviously glue, edible glue, or piping gel on the wire here for the sugar one, we would just use a PVA um, school glue, white glue. Uh, here I'm just gonna, with sugar, usually just gonna take a little bit of fat or shortening and just condition this slightly. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna roll this into a sausage, about half the length of the cavity. So you see it's about half the length of the here. Taking a wire, this is a 22 gauge wire. I'm using a white wire. What I want to do is I'm going to hold the wire and make this really almost the length of the cavity. So you see it's almost the length of the cavity. It's a little bit short for the top. And then what I would do is use a little bit of glue, edible glue. And for sugar, piping gel can be used for this as well. I'm just gonna brush a little bit of that onto the wire. So remember, this is just about the length of the, the feather. And then we're going to insert this into the sausage. You know, in sugar, if you watch my Flower Pro Calorie, this is just like we do a calorie center. So the wire goes really right away to the top there. I'm gonna make the top slightly pointed, and I'm now going to stretch this down, just like I make a calorie. When I teach, I relate to this a bit like the technique of milking a cow or a goat, is a stretch and a pull and you're just working the paste down. And of course with air drying clay, air drying clay is quite soft, it's easy to manipulate in the same way. You do everything else the same. And so we're going to make that to about, um, literally, as I said, about three quarters of the length of the piece of the feather. Now I'm gonna use my thumb and I'm going to just bend that over my thumb slightly. So you see it has a little bit of a curve to it because that emulates the shape of the feather, you see? And you're just gonna put the put it into the middle. So there's a little bit of pay, a little bit of gap at the top, a little bit at the bottom there. I'm just gonna just gently press it in with my finger to start. So it won't really move, but the wire stays in the channel there. 
taking my cosmetic sponge, just press it in a little bit with my cosmetic sponge like this. And then I will use the back of the vena. Now I don't want to obviously use the vein inside at this point, I will do that later. Um, but I'm just using the back of the vena, so it's obviously going to bend in the opposite direction. But what this does is I uh, use again this technique a lot for Flower Pro. It's going to um, press it into the mold, you see. And then using my cosmetic sponge, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in with the cosmetic sponge, work into the top, just bringing this here and just working this in. You're going to see the wire a little bit, but it's not going to be noticeable because once it dries. And here we're going to just going to work this into the mold to so really work in each side of the wire here. You can use your fingers. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing the paste to sort of help to make that a little bit thicker in the middle. So that will actually cover over where the wire is. And then we're going to use the Flexi Scraper. So this is used for Flower Pro, also obviously for regular KD suit molds. And uh, at the top here, if you have that little bit of excess paste, you're going to use a saw in action, and that will just saw off the excess paste. And you can also um, use uh, products like for Sugarcraft, this is called a uh, Dresden veining tool you can use this to help to pull this into the e details. Again, like on my fly, say Flower Pro fern, I would use this sort of technique. You see, you see, we're just working this paste down. Now, if you need to, like if you had, you know, this takes a little practice, all right. But if you needed, for example, like if your wire was really visible, you can just literally just put like a little uh, band aid, like a little plaster of uh, paste over it, so you could put that over it. But as I say, usually it's okay. But if you have any little areas that need a little bit more paste, you can just uh, patch that, all right? So, so as I said, that one started off with the number eight regular size. But just, just bring your fingers, so you see you're actually establishing the ridge there, because we're gonna have the, obviously, the lateral ridge, which is the central ridge, is gonna go into there. Now at this point, now if you were doing a craft project, um, for example, when you were doing this unwired, you just follow the same step, make a sausage, and obviously you tapered it and press it into the mold. And then of course, press the back veiner. And then um, if you want the veining on the back, if you were using this on a craft project, because even for example, on these, uh, on this cake, um, you can see these beautiful feathers, you don't see the back of them. So you don't have to, it's optional whether you vein the back. But on the, for example, a feather where you're going to stand it up on top of a cake or for example, a craft project, and you're gonna see both sides of it. Obviously it's nice to have the veining on the back. So like with uh, my Flower Pro, um, same sort of concept, you just line this up. So you see that this the v, v, v shape here, the veiner is obviously in the middle. Just make sure the top is on there. And then we're just going to go down the veiner, just working down the veiner. So, you know, take the veiner off here. Now, if, for example, it's not where it should be, right in the middle there. So, because remember, there's a curve here. This is actually a little bit more curved, which is more like this one. So, just remember, when you line it up, you're going to line up the wire in the bottom. And then look, look here. And so, you want to make sure that the, the top part there is sort of in that top tip there. And then just press... French press gently on the two sides, all right? So that's how the, they will obviously vein. So this gives you a back. You're gonna flex the obviously feather here, and you can see how you're gonna have your really beautiful feather. A little piece on the back here, and a vein on the back, all right? And um, now what we're gonna do is a couple of things you can do here. If you have a little cutting wheel, this is a Sugarcraft cutting wheel. It's like almost a miniature pizza cutter. These, this I found works very well. You can just go in and just obviously almost cut to separate, not all of them, but just separate some of the pieces here. And this sort of almost has got like a slight, so you see how I'm actually almost like using this as a slight curve. You can also do that with uh, scissors. You can use, uh, for example, like on little small ones, you can use like a spring, these are spring action scissors, or you can use for example, normal scissors. Again, you see this sort of separates the pieces there. All right, so feathers, uh, the scissors work very well. 
and then also my Flower Pro companion tool. So this comes with the ultimate filler flower, but also can uh, be sold separately. And uh, you can use, uh, for example, this uh, on your back of the vena here. And again, you can just sort of cut through and that will cut through the feather to give you that nice sort of natural, natural look. Now you can see the wire comes up to about here. All right. And of course, once this dries, the wire will stay in place. And then you're going to use your companion tool. All right. So with the companion tool, I'm just going to just pinch around just the bottom there. So you get almost like a slight V shape. And then with my fingers, I'm going to bring this up so it's like a Mexican taco shell. So you get this sort of taco shape. And then what I do is take a piece of convoluted foam. This is a convoluted uh, uh, foam, like a crepe foam. And you see, I'm just going to lay the feather into there so it will dry in that sort of slight V shape. All right. And the end, as you can see, the end of the feather will come just to give a nice elegant shape to it. But the wire is pretty much to the top. Of course, if you're doing this unwired, you do all the same steps, but you're just going to put it into a former to support it. Next, I'm going to show you how I do the small one, which is a different technique. For the small feather, I've already, remember, I've already brushed this with a little bit of vegetable fat, a vegetable shortening. All right, so I use a different technique for this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to take my 22 gauge wire. And what I want to do is I'm going to bend the wire to fit the sort of the shape of the feather. So I'm actually going to bend the wire internally inside the mold. So it almost follows the same shape as the, so you see the Y is here, and it sort of follows the same shape as the, as the central vein. And you almost just with the channel there, you're just gonna bend that into place, you see? So that actually sits in, in there like so. So you can see just, just the wire is gonna be straight here, and then it's just going to fit in to there. And at that, at that point where the, the channel is, I'm going to put a little crook in the, in the wire, but just sort of bend that to fit the shape. All right. So that sort of fits the shape of the, of the piece there. All right. And, um, so of course, if you're doing maybe two of these, you can make as many of these as you need. So this one is eight small and I'm doing this in the green color. On the final cake, I have the small feather in green. Now, the reason I made the uh, feather, the medium feather, I'm going to be painting gold, uh, yellow, is when you do things gold, and that applies also to air drying clay as well, you want to also always start off with yellow paste. And then when if I was painting them silver, I would uh, start off with gray. And then, for example, rose gold, which is a very popular trend color at the moment, I would use a peach color, pinky peach color. So here, what I'm going to do is I've already got the vegetable shortening into there. And this is really almost how you do the unwired one. You just make this into a sausage. All right, so about half the length of that. So think of how I did it with, with when I had the wire on. You then just taper the end and just stretch that down. So I now make that to basically about almost uh, the length of the feather. All right, so just so, so now Next step is going to just be press that in with your finger and then with your cosmetic sponge. And now using the back of the vein, of course you can use the big one here, doesn't matter, but just going to help to fill the mold up. And now what I'm gonna do is gonna fill this into the mold. Now, as with all um, Katie Sue molds, um, including my Flower Pro and Nicholas Lodge brand uh, molds by Katie Sue Design, you always stay within in the perimeter of the mold. Now, another thing you can use is also um, a wedge. So for some of my project, like my, for example, Flower Pro Blossoms, I like, a, um, as I said, the, the wedge style cosmetic sponge. You can put that into detail. Just press that into the paste. Remember, you can use the aid of a Dresden tool to help push your paste into. There's lots of different companies that sell these. Remember, if you have a little bit of excess paste, you can use your flexi scraper just to sort of uh, trim off any excess paste because you want to stay within the perimeter of the mold. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is once you get to this part here, I'm going to take my, just make sure that that sort of uh, fits into the space okay. 
So on the side that's going to make contact with the paste, I'm going to take my glue, you know, remember I like a sort of PVA glue for uh, air drying clay, edible glue, piping gel, flexi glue, any sort of sugar craft glue will go onto here, something sticky. And also, of course, use egg white with a traditional flour gum paste. Um, you can use egg white as well, but you just sort of brush that on the side, it's going to make contact. And then I'm going to put that into the channel. So you see the wire goes into the channel like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just going to put a little uh, sausage, a thin sausage paste on the top. Because of the shape of this, it's difficult to try and do it in the same way that I made um, the, the other uh, two feathers. So just like, I mean, I showed you almost uh, making like a little uh, plaster or band-aid um, to go on top. So then you can just literally just cover that over with a, just a thin sausage. You don't have to measure that, just a little thin sausage. And you see that will mask the wire. So you're almost sandwiching the wire in between those two pieces. Again, you can now just go back with your, and then your air drying clay or your sugar will just blend around that. And as I said, it will you know, be for the back, okay? So you see that will then just disappear just smooth that with your finger. And then when we uh, vein the back, so same concept, remember we're going to use your um, V shape. So the wire goes into there. You see that will obviously be the tip. So the tip, just make sure that's lined up there. I'm just gonna press that on. I'm just really pressing each side of the wire. And you see that will give you the beautiful veining onto the back. Flex your mold. And then take that out of the mold and see you've got a beautiful feather. I particularly love the sort of the shape of this one. It has a very organic feel, a bit like an ostrich feather. And um, then again, you can use your cutting wheel. You know, you can just make some little cuts into here. So this just gives us nice sort of natural edge. Remember scissors can be used for that as well. I like the spring action scissors because they're fine. And you can also buy for craft, for, um, for craft and needle crafts, you can actually buy curved scissors. So if you have some curved scissors, um, they also work very well, of course, for this. And remember you can also, the other technique is using a little um, here, I can companion tool, so you can just make some little sort of uh, cuts, little feathery cuts there, like so. And then we take the, just gonna just hollow that, gonna pinch it around the wire, because you want the wire to be obviously like your spine or your backbone. So that goes onto the center of this. And again, this is gonna just go into the, here, and you see that just dries in a nice natural shape. And of course, once the feathers are dry, you could uh, dust them. For example, this one here, you could dust this with some chocolate and like a tan, like a chestnut color. Of course, you can paint this. It's got little white specks on top. It's painted with black and a gray. Um, you can also do metallic. So obviously for sugar craft, this is a gold um, highlighter. I mix with some orange oil or lemon oil and paint it onto uh, the feathers. Of course, uh, you can use this effect also on uh, crafts with gilding wax and other things as well to embellish this and obviously give it a color that you um, desire for the project. And um, so very, very versatile mold. And I said that obviously the ones here shown on the back, you know, this is obviously dusted. This is done in obviously a creamy color here and dusted with a little bit of gray. So really pretty much you're uh, unlimited to uh, how you finish these off depending on how you're going to use them. So these are the feathers. Um, then once they're dried, painted the one gold. I've actually taped these with gold floral tape and uh, or you can also use white or black. Um, you could even paint the white gold. And then I have in the top of the cake, I have um, a little straw, a small like a little cocktail straw, um, the depth of the cake, and that will act as a sort of a little uh, holder. And so then to finish off the cake, I'm just going to push these into the straw here like that. And you can see what an amazing addition these uh, Katie Sue feather mold makes to this cake. 
So I hope you will enjoy using this Katie Sue Innovative Feather Mold for lots of projects in cake and craft. Until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes. Bye.